For centuries, it was whispered about like a myth, a grand city lost to time. Ancient scrolls mention Tonus Heraklion, an Egyptian port bustling with trade and wealth, but no trace of it remained, until a French archaeologist named Frank Gaudio made a stunning discovery. Out of the murky depths of the Mediterranean Sea, a colossal face emerged. Massive statues, sunken ships, glittering coins. This was no myth. This was Thonis Heraklion, frozen in time beneath the waves. This once mighty port controlled the flow of goods in and out of Egypt. Canals crisscrossed the city like veins, connecting temples, homes, and bustling markets. Imagine a vibrant mix of Egyptians and Greek merchants, the scent of spices and the clang of precious metals filling the air. Yet, the city's glory days were tragically cut short. Some cataclysmic events swallowed Thonis Heraklion whole, leaving it submerged and forgotten. How did a thriving economic powerhouse simply vanish into the sea? Stay tuned to uncover the full story of this underwater marvel. Imagine a city frozen in time, not under the desert sands, but beneath the waves of the Mediterranean Sea. This is the story of Thonis Heraklion, a legendary port city that vanished over a thousand years ago and became known as Egypt's Atlantis. For centuries, it was only a whisper in old texts, and then a lucky discovery changed everything. Thonis Heraklion's origins stretch back to the 12th century BC, perhaps even earlier. Greek historians wrote about it, its importance growing as Egypt's ancient dynasties began to fade. The city bloomed on islands formed by the twisting branches of the Nile Delta. Canals snaked around its heart, a bustling web of waterways connecting temples and harbors alive with activity. Think of Venice, but in the vibrant and mysterious world of ancient Egypt. Trade made Thonis Heraklion rich. Its wharves were laden with exotic goods, its markets a colorful tapestry of Egyptian and foreign merchants. It was the gateway to Egypt, collecting taxes and controlling the flow of treasures in and out of the pharaoh's realm. But opulence came with reverence. Within the city stood a grand temple to Amun Gereb, the supreme Egyptian god, a testament to their devotion. For centuries, it thrived, a dazzling port city where cultures and commerce flourished. However, a series of natural forces conspired against Thonis Heraklion. Imagine the ground beneath the city trembling violently. Earthquakes and rising sea levels weakened the very foundations it was built upon. Around 101 BC, after a particularly powerful flood, disaster struck. The island at the heart of the city collapsed, the soil turning treacherous. Solid ground became like quicksand, swallowing buildings whole. The Mediterranean Sea surged in, drowning avenues, temples, and homes with unstoppable force. Some inhabitants clung on, remnants of the once mighty city echoing in the Roman era, but by the 8th century AD, the last vestiges of Thonis Heraklion were gone. Yet all was not lost, the very sea that devoured the city became its protector. Layers of sand and sediment swallowed the ruins, concealing Thonis Heraklion from the world for over a millennium. Now, the exciting story of its rediscovery and the secrets it holds are ready to be revealed. Long before its discovery, Thonis Heraklion was woven into the fabric of Greek mythology. Historians like Herodotus, Strabo, and Diodorus all mention it, usually when telling epic tales of figures like the mighty Heracles, Hercules in Roman mythology, and the ill-fated Paris of Troy. These stories give us clues about the city's location, near the Nile, with a coastline stretching along the Mediterranean. Strabo believed that Thonis, the city's Egyptian name, came from a legendary king. Imagine the city standing proud, where mighty canals met the shimmering sea. Diodorus tells a fascinating story of how Heracles saved the region from devastating floods. He describes the Nile River raging so violently, it was called Atus, the eagle, until Heracles tamed it, diverting it back to its rightful course. Diodorus even suggests this heroic deed inspired the myth of Heracles slaying the eagle that tormented Prometheus. Then there's Herodotus' thrilling tale of Paris and Helen of Troy. Seeking refuge from a vengeful Menelaus, they landed at the canopic mouth of the Nile. Paris's servants seeking sanctuary fled to a coastal temple dedicated to Heracles. They betrayed Paris to the temple priests and to Thonis, the legendary watchman of the Nile. It was Thonis who brought the guilty lovers to Memphis for judgment. Another legend claims that Menelaus and Helen themselves found shelter at Thonis, with a noble named Thone and his wife Polydamna. Even the death of Menelaus's helmsman, Canopus, is linked to Thonis. 
Greek poet Nicander says he was fatally bitten by a viper on its sandy shores. These myths and legends blur the line between fact and fiction, but they reveal how important Thonis Heraklion was in the imaginations of the ancient Greeks, a place where gods, heroes, and lovers walked the earth alongside merchants and priests. For centuries, Thonis Heraklion was a tantalizing mystery. Ancient historians like Herodotus and Strabo chronicled its existence, hinting at temples and treasures, but the city had simply vanished. Then came Frank Gaudio, a pioneer of underwater archaeology. A passionate seeker of lost worlds, he founded the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology in 1987. Their mission? To find and study the secrets hidden beneath the waves. Gaudio's team knew roughly where to look. Historical accounts suggested Thonis Heraklion lay submerged in the Mediterranean near the Nile Delta. In 1996, they zeroed in on Abukir Bay, a vast expanse northeast of Alexandria. Their challenge was immense, finding a sunken city under layers of sediment across an 11 by 15 kilometer search area. The search was slow and methodical. The team used cutting-edge sonar technology to scan the seabed, seeking anomalies that might hint at ruins. This painstaking mapping painted a picture of the underwater landscape and, crucially, highlighted areas where the seafloor wasn't quite natural. These became their targets. It took years, but in 2000, their persistence paid off. A colossal face materialized from the depths, the first breathtaking sign that they had found Thonis Heraklion. But how do you excavate an entire city lost under the sea? Gaudio's team deployed a variety of advanced tools. Divers carefully cleared away layers of sand and mud, uncovering treasures perfectly preserved by the sea. Delicate artifacts were tagged and placed in protective bags, while larger items like statues required heavy machinery to lift them safely. 3D mapping technologies came into their own. Sonar and lasers allowed archaeologists to create incredibly detailed images of the city, guiding their exploration and understanding of the site. Everything was meticulously recorded. A grid system ensured every find's position was accurately documented. The submerged ruins yielded astonishing treasures. The Grand Temple of Amun Gareb, giant statues of pharaohs, smaller figures of deities, a sphinx. It was a time capsule of the ancient world. The team even found 64 ancient shipwrecks, showing the vast trade network that flowed through the city. Coins, anchors, inscriptions, each artifact added a piece to the puzzle. What's remarkable is the city's state of preservation. The sea, once its destroyer, shielded it for hundreds of years. And now, through careful excavation, Tonus Heraklion is slowly being revealed, giving us a precious glimpse into a lost world. The treasures of Tonus Heraklion are a testament to its wealth and importance. One spectacular find between 2009 and 2011 was a barris, a type of ancient Nile river barge. Its design remarkably matched descriptions by the historian Herodotus from nearly 2,500 years ago. This underscores the accuracy of his accounts, while also giving us a fascinating window into ancient shipbuilding. With the city frozen in time, archaeologists have been able to piece together a vivid picture of daily life. A towering steel found near the temple of Amun Gareb bears a decree from King Nectanebo I, granting subsidies to the temple. This steel is doubly important. It finally proved that the names Thonis and Heraklion refer to the same place. One of the most captivating finds has been the vast collection of sunken ships, over 70 of them. This is truly unprecedented in archaeology, a unique snapshot of maritime technology and trade. Archaeologists can closely analyze their construction methods, materials, and even their origins. Other discoveries shed light on the city's religious and cultural life. A majestic statue of either Cleopatra II or III portrays her as the goddess Isis, a reminder of the powerful link between royalty and divinity. An imposing statue of Hapi, the god of the Nile flood, depicts him holding offering trays laden with bread, a sign of the abundance he represented. Myriad other finds deepen our understanding. Gold coins, smaller statues of gods, animal sarcophagi dedicated to sacred offerings, and intricate poetry. Some pieces hail from Greece, confirming a sizable Greek presence in Tonus Heraklion, a melting pot of cultures. And this is just the beginning. Frank Gaudio estimates that only 5% of the city has been excavated so far. With each dive, a new piece of the puzzle emerges. An artifact, a crumbled wall, a forgotten inscription. 
In July of 2019, Gaudio's team made a thrilling series of finds. A tholus, a small Greek temple, imposing granite columns, ships overflowing with treasures, and bronze coins from the reign of Ptolemy II, dating back over 2,000 years. These discoveries offered tantalizing hints at the city's cosmopolitan nature and its continued wealth even centuries after its founding. Fast forward to August of 2021, and the IEASM announced a groundbreaking discovery, the excavation of a rare Ptolemaic galley. This 25-meter-long warship featured both Greek and Egyptian construction techniques. Its distinctive design, including a flat bottom ideal for navigating the Nile, shows how the two cultures cleverly combined their shipbuilding knowledge. The ship was found pinned to the seabed by debris from the Temple of Amun, preserved by the very disaster that brought Tonus Heraklion down. This stunning warship highlights the cultural exchange within the city. A Greek military vessel, built using Egyptian techniques, speaks volumes about the multicultural society in Thonis Heraklion, a city where Greek presence was clearly strong and influential. Another significant discovery was a tumulus, a burial mound, covered in a rich abundance of offerings. Wicker baskets bursting with fruits and grape seeds, exquisite Greek ceramics, even a beautiful wooden sofa used for feasts. These treasures were likely placed in an underground chamber, miraculously preserved despite the city existing for centuries beyond their burial. What makes this find exceptional is the evidence it provides of Greek merchants and mercenaries living long and prosperous lives within Donus Heraklion. More recently, in September of 2023, the IEASM revealed even more stunning finds, the ruins of a temple dedicated to Amun, Egypt's supreme god, and a Greek sanctuary dedicated to Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Alongside these religious structures, archaeologists unearthed a trove of artifacts, from ancient Egyptian pottery to Greek weapons. This discovery reinforces the idea of Thonis Heraklion as a city where cultures and religious beliefs merged, creating a unique and vibrant society. These ongoing discoveries paint an increasingly detailed picture of Thonis Heraklion. From bustling temples to bustling trade, from Greek settlers to Egyptian priests, this lost city is slowly revealing its incredible story, bit by bit. And there you have it, the incredible story of Thonis Heraklion the lost city that rose from the depths. If you enjoyed this journey into the past, please show your support. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss an update on our latest discoveries. Thanks for watching.